What's up you guys, it's Sajander here. Thank you so much for joining in. Today we're going to be talking about the book In Order to Live by Yeonmi Park. This book is about what really goes on in North Korea and how Yeonmi was able to escape North Korea. I found out about this book by listening to Joe Rogan's podcast. Joe Rogan interviewed Yeonmi and I was really moved by her story. Let's not waste any time and dive right into this book. But before that, we have to thank the sponsor of this video. It's none other than the like button. But seriously, it takes less than 10 seconds for you guys to smash the like button and it helps me tremendously. So please consider liking this video. In North Korea, there is a saying that even the mice and birds can hear you. That's because everyone is listening in North Korea. Your family members, neighbors and government officials. Your neighbors will tell on you because if they don't, they'll be punished and executed for not sharing what they've heard. People in North Korea truly believe that their supreme leader, Kim Jong-un, can actually hear and read their mind. So they won't even dare to think or say what they're not supposed to. All the outside media are banned. All you can hear on radio or watch on TV is propagandas about the regime and the Western countries. People in North Korea truly think that Kim Jong-un can control the weather and has superpowers. Even in school, subjects like English, math, and science, they're all taught differently connected to propagandas. For example, a math question would be something like, um, if you kill one American bastard and your comrade kills two, how many American bastards do you have? You're not allowed to just say American because that's considered being too respectful. You would be criticized and punished for being too soft on your enemies. People are divided into three classes. The highest is the core class, which includes war veterans or relatives of those who fought or died for North Korea or those who have demonstrated great loyalty to the Kim family. The second is the basic class, which includes those who once lived in South or had family there, former merchants, intellectuals, or any ordinary persons who might not be trusted to have complete loyalty to the regime. The last is the hostile class, which includes former landowners, their descendants, capitalists, former South Korean soldiers, Christians, or any other religious followers, the family of political prisoners, or any other perceived enemies of the state. It is extremely hard to move to the higher class, but it's very easy to be demoted to the lower class even when there is no fault of your own. That was just a quick introduction about North Korea. Now let's actually talk about Yeonmi Park, the author of the book who escaped North Korea. Yeonmi Park was born three months earlier. When she was born, she weighed less than three pounds. No matter how many blankets her mom wrapped around her, she couldn't keep her warm. So the only way her mom kept her alive was putting a heated stone into the blanket and covering her with it. Yeonmi and her family lived in Hisan. It was right next to the Yalu River that was dividing China and North Korea. It was Yeonmi, her mom, her dad, and Yoonmi, her sister, who lived together. They didn't have electricity, so once the sun sets, they're basically in the dark until the next day. At night, Yeonmi can see the lights coming from China, and that's how dark it was in North Korea. Yeonmi Park's dad traded goods in the black market to keep the family alive. But soon, when the famine hit North Korea, everyone started to trade in the black market. The competition got bigger and it was hard for her dad to compete. So he decided to trade exotic materials like gold, silver, copper, and nickel from the wooden crates that goes to the regime. He knew a guard who worked there that can help him. It's extremely dangerous trade and Yeonmi's mom, at first she didn't want her dad to do this, but soon their situation got worse so they had no other choice than going through with this dangerous trade. If her dad got caught while doing these trades, he would have been punished severely and be tortured for years. After a while, Yeonmi's dad started working in the regime's capital. Once he started working there, Yeonmi's family got into a better position. They were able to afford three meals a day and they were doing better than most of their neighbors. Since her dad worked there for nine months in a year, he would let one of his daughter visit at a time. During her visit to the regime's capital, Yeonmi saw so many things for the first time in her life. Tall buildings, lights, restaurants, anything that we see in our day-to-day -day life. When Yeonmi was 13 years old, she got very sick, so they admitted her to the hospital. The doctors there thought it was appendix and they decided to have surgery. 
the hospitals in North Korea are so poor that Yeonmi's mom had to buy anesthesia for her and give it to the doctors. But the anesthesia didn't last long and Yeonmi woke up during the surgery and she was awake for the rest of the surgery. That's when Yeonmi's mom decided that they'll have to leave North Korea for good because the situation there was just getting worse. While she was recovering from her surgery, Yeonmi's sister Yoonmi found a way to escape to China. But she wasn't gonna wait until Yeonmi recovers from her surgery because that was the only way or the last chance of her escaping North Korea. So she left her mother, dad and Yeonmi and started her escape to China. After a while, Yeonmi and her mom went to the same broker and they started their escape to China, leaving their dad. After following multiple brokers, they finally reached China. When Yeonmi and her mother reached China, they were given a choice. They can either stay in China for basically human trafficking or go back to North Korea. They chose to stay in China in hope of getting food and to find Yeonmi. They were sold to different brokers. The broker had to sell Yeonmi and her mom separately. But her mom begged the broker that Yeonmi was only 13 years old. So the broker agreed to take care of her until she was old enough. But while taking care of her, the broker tried to rape Yeonmi so many times. But Yeonmi would scream and bite him. So the broker sold Yeonmi to another broker named Hongwei. Hongwei really liked Yeonmi. He really liked her. He bought her a lot of clothes, jewelries, and fed her every day. He really took care of her and he made a deal with Yeonmi that if she stayed with him as his mistress, he will get her mother back, father from North Korea, and help her find her sister. For her family, Yeonmi agreed to this. The broker kept his end of the deal and got her mother back and father from North Korea. At this time, Yeonmi's sister Yeonmi is still missing, but her father got very sick so they admitted him to the hospital and found out that he has colon cancer. After a few months, Yeonmi's dad passed away. For the 2007 Summer Olympics, the Chinese government started to crack down on human trafficking. Because Hung Wai was on the human trafficking business, it was very hard for him to take care of Yeonmi, so he decided to let Yeonmi be independent. Yeonmi went to a club in hope of getting a fake ID so she can find a job in China. But there she was tricked by a rich man who wanted Yeonmi to have her son in return of a fake ID. Yeonmi thought this wasn't right so she tricked the rich man and escaped successfully from him. Yeonmi and her mother went out of town and started to work in chat rooms. In the chat room they found out about South Korea. Keep in mind this is South Korea not North Korea. They also found someone who can help them escape to South Korea. For this, they have to stay in a place, learn Christianity and prove their loyalty to the religion. So Yeonmi and her mother started learning the Bible and started to pray every day. Once they were ready, the pastor sent them. They would have to travel to the Gobi Desert to Mongolia from where they would escape to South Korea. It was a very dangerous trip, but they had no other choice. So they decided to travel through the Gobi Desert which sometimes gets below minus 27 degrees and they had to wear light clothes so that they won't be identified by the soldiers. After days of walking across the Gobi Desert, they finally reached Mongolia. But the Mongolian soldiers told them that they're gonna send them back to China. They were all terrified and they were ready to die. After everyone begging to the Mongolian soldiers, they took them to the Mongolian military base instead of China. There, they were treated like prisoners to make sure they were not a North Korean spy. After gaining their trust, they were sent to South Korea. But even there, they were still in a prison, or you can call a refugee camp, to make sure they were not a North Korean spy. After all the interrogations, they were sent out to live on their own in South Korea, Seoul. In there, they had a very hard time. Having to make decisions on their own was a completely new concept for them because in North Korea, everything was decided for them. Even in school, Yeonmi had a very hard time. She was way behind in her education for her age. Also, because of her North Korean accent, no one would talk to her. She was going to give up, but to honor her dad, she started studying every day. She studied so hard and passed high school as well as university as well. She started to read a lot of books on everything on everyone. Shakespeare, Western culture, Socrates, and just everything. In 2015, Yeonmi's sister Yeonmi found them and rejoined with their family. 
After seven years now, Yonvi become an activist and a spokesperson for all the 25 million suppressed people in North Korea by the regime. She has traveled to the United States multiple times for different conferences. Now the North Korean regime has denounced her as a human rights puppet. They have been spreading false propagandas about her, but Yonmi hasn't stopped speaking up for the North Korean people, even when she has gotten numerous death threats. This book is the first time Yonmi shared what exactly happened with her in North Korea. So if you guys want to read the book and see what really goes on in North Korea, I'll leave the link of this book in the description below. I'm an affiliate member of Amazon, so if you guys decide to buy through the link, I'll be compensated. With that said, thank you so much for watching this video. As always, don't forget to hit the like, subscribe, and the notification bell. Also, feel free to add me on Instagram. I post any updates and giveaways on there, so if you want to be a part of it, feel free to add me on Instagram. Thank you so much again for watching this video. Until next time.